So lastly, in this video, before we go ahead and deploy our website to Firebase, we want to go ahead and create our mobile navigation. So how this is simply going to work is we're going to click on this icon and then our navigation is going to animate in from the right hand side and take up a portion of our screen here. We're going to add a black background here so that we don't uh, we have a better contrast between our navigation and our page. And then we're also going to add a close icon here on the left hand side that's going to retract the navigation and close that out. So that's what we're going to be building here in this video. So let's head over to our index.html and get started. All right, now the first thing we're going to do inside of our original navigation here is we need to add the icon of these three bars so that we can go ahead and toggle and close our mobile navigation. So this is going to be another font awesome class and just below the anchor tag here in our original navigation, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this in. So we're simply using an I tag that has a class of FAS and then a secondary class of FA bars. Okay. And that's all we're going to need to do for our original navigation. Now for the mobile navigation, we're going to create a whole entire new section for this. So we're going to go right below our contact modal and above the navigation here and create a new comment. And we're going to call this mobile nav. Okay. Now to begin, we want to open up a new div and we're going to give this a class of mobile dash BG and also a class of display none because initially we don't want this class to be shown when a user first comes to the page. We'll be using JavaScript just as we did with our contact modal to go ahead and dynamically remove and add this class when someone goes ahead and clicks on our newly added icon here of the FAS, FA bars inside of our navigation. Okay, so inside of this class or inside of this div, we're going to start with another font awesome icon because if you recall, when we go ahead and click on our navigation, we have this close icon here in the top left hand corner. So that again is going to be a font awesome icon. So this is going to have a class. We're going to go ahead and say I tag, give it a class of FAR and then FA dash times dash circle. Okay. And then lastly, what we need to do is we need to get our navigation. Now, instead of typing this out and wasting time, we can head right into our header here and we can simply copy and paste this UL right below our I tag. Okay. So if we save this and take a look on our document, you'll see that the only thing present right now that is new is our icon of FAS uh, dot FA bars. Okay. And the reason why we're not seeing our new mobile class here is because we have it as display none. So if I copy and get rid of this real quick, you'll see that above our original navigation, we now have our mobile navigation. So that is going to be it for the markup. So let's head over and let's put this back on here. So let's head over to our style that SCSS and get started on styling up our mobile navigation. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is style up the icon we just added to our original navigation here. So we need to do a few things. Number one, we don't want this icon displayed on viewports larger than 800. We only want the icon visible when we're on a mobile view. Okay. Secondly, we need to have this icon here on the right hand side and we need to make it a little bigger. So let's begin by doing that. So inside of our header tag here and inside of the nav, we're going to go ahead and nest our I tag here. And we're going to start by giving this a Z index of six. We're going to increase the font size to 24 pixels. We're going to give this a flex of one. And then we simply want to text align this to the right. Okay. So with those styles apply, we should see now that it is on the right hand side and looks a lot better. Now, the one problem is that if we increase this, you'll see that the icon is still present. So let's go ahead and add a media query here that when it is above 800 pixels, we'll go ahead and put this icon to display none. So what we can do is we can open up a media query here and we're going to say at media, we're going to say min width, and we're going to say 800 pixels. And we simply want to display this as none. And we want to give it an important because without that, it will still be shown. And if we go ahead and increase the viewport now, you should see the icon is not present. And if we shrink it back down, the icon is there. So that looks great. Now, Moving on here, we need to work on our new, uh, newly added mobile navigation here. So this will be pretty simple. Now I'm going to go right below our modal here and we're going to say mobile nav as our comment. And to begin here, we want to target our mobile, oops, not slash. We want to target our 
mobile, and then BG class. All right, so to begin here, we're gonna start by giving this a position of fixed. We want to set the background color to a RGBA, and we're going to say black, and we're gonna change the opacity to 70%. We're going to give this a width and height of 100% to take up the space available. And we'll say height 100%. And then we want to give this a Z index of four, and then set the right to zero. And that's all we're gonna be doing for the mobile uh, BG class. Now, moving on here, we want to target our I class, again, because we had that close icon there. So we want to position this, and we're gonna say absolute. We want to give this a color of white. We want to set the left to 20 pixels, and then the top to 20 pixels as well. Okay, and then we're gonna give this a font size of 24 pixels. So for this section, I'm going to simply take off this display none just to go ahead and show you what we're doing here. So with these styles added, let's see where we're at. And as you can see, we now have a black background. That icon right here is set up to be in the top left, but now we need to work on the actual navigation portion. So let's go ahead and get to that. So what we can do is we can simply target our UL here, and we're gonna give this a position of absolute as well. We're gonna give it a padding, whoops, we're gonna give us a padding of 20 pixels on all sides. We're going to give it a fixed width of 300 pixels. We're gonna set the right to zero, and we're gonna give this a background color of an RGBA, and we're gonna say zero, 123, 255, and then we're going to set the opacity not to 50, but to 70. And then we wanna make this take up the full height, so we're gonna say 100%. Okay, so if we take a look now, you should see that we have our actual slide out navigation here, and why is it doing that? We don't want that, let's get rid of that and try it again. Okay, so we have this looking pretty good, but now we still need to do some styling to our list items here, so let's go ahead and get to that, okay? So what we wanna do is inside of this, we're going to nest our anchor tags here, and we simply want to give these a color of white, and then a little bit of a thicker font weight, we're gonna say 500. And that's going to be it for our anchor tags. Now, we have our list items here, so let's go ahead and target our LIs, and we simply want to give these a padding of 10 pixels, and then zero. Okay, so that's going to actually do it for the styling. If we head over here now, you should see things are looking great. We have our icon here in the top left-hand corner. We have our list items all styled out. And if we click on one of these, you can see it's actually not going to work very well inside of here. Let me go ahead and refresh it actually. And let's go ahead and get rid of this. You can see that these actually will take you to the correct section. So if we do about us, you can see it still works and it'll take you to the about section with that smooth scrolling animation. Okay, so. For now, we're going to throw the display none back on here. So let's go ahead and do that. And now what we need to do is we need to actually incorporate some JavaScript into this. So we want to say when we click on this button here, we want our menu to slide out. Now, the one thing we still need to do is I'm going to go ahead and create some animation classes within our CSS here really quick. So we're not gonna actually use these until we get into the JavaScript, but I want to go ahead and create them. And we have used animations uh, before on this channel. So what I'm gonna go ahead and say here is we'll go above this section of multiple styles and we're gonna simply say animation. If I can spell, okay? So we wanted to create two animations here, one for sliding in and one for sliding out. So how we create animations, first off, we need to go ahead and say at keyframes. We're gonna give this a name. We're gonna call this slide in. And then we're gonna open this up in some curly break, uh, brackets. Now, we want to say at 0% here, we're gonna apply some styles. And what we're gonna say is we're gonna give this a transform, and we want to translate the X by 300 pixels, okay? And then, when the animation is complete, at 100%, we want to have that transform, translate X at zero. And we, can don't, we don't have to put pixels here when we're using zero. So what this is saying is that when it starts, it's going to be 300 pixels off the page to the right. And when it finishes, it's going to be um, 
300 pixels centered. So it's going to be 300 pixels off the page and it's going to come back to the default position, which would be zero. Now we need to also create one for the slide out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simply go ahead and duplicate this and we're going to call this slide out. So what we're going to say here is when we want to have our uh, navigation slide out, we're going to have a begin at zero pixels and I can get rid of this here. And then we want to translate it 300 pixels to the right. Okay. So that is how you create the animations. Now we need to go ahead and apply these animations to classes so that when we go ahead and call JavaScript, we can dynamically add and remove these classes. And we'll go ahead and get to that. Like I said, once we do our JavaScript. So let's say down here, we're going to create a class called slide in and we're going to say the animation property here. Now we're going to go ahead and call our animation of slide in. So we're going to say slide dash in. We're going to pass the transition time, which we're going to say is going to be 500 milliseconds. And we want that to be ease. Okay. And then once again, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this because we want to have one for slide out. So we're going to call this slide out. And then we're going to come over here where it says slide in and we called slide out. So Hopefully that makes sense. We're not going to get too involved with animations here. You can do a lot with it, but this is simply how we're going to utilize these animations in our project. So we're going to call in the slide in class here. And then when we click the X button, we're going to call slide out. Okay. So that's going to be all for the styling and animations for this section next up. And we're going to get to is the JavaScript. So let's head over to our main.js and get started with that. Before we go ahead and begin, I want to just go ahead and point out that I did make a little mistake in the markup here. So one thing we're going to need to add to our UL here inside of our mobile navigation is the class of mobile nav. Now, the reason why we need this is simply because it's going to be a way we're going to target this UL within our JavaScript. And the easiest way to do that is to by uh, giving it a class and then we're going to go ahead and target uh, that class in our JavaScript to go ahead and select this UL. OK, so. Now inside of our main.js here, the first thing we're going to say is we're going to give this a uh, common here, a mobile nav. Now to save some time, you've seen how we went ahead and did all of these constants and then set them up to uh, a document that query selector. I'm just going to go ahead and paste the ones we need in here to save some time. So let me go ahead and briefly explain what we're going to be targeting here. So we have our open icon. Now this is the icon we went ahead and gave in our uh, original header here. So that's going to be selected by the class of FA dash bars. Next up, we have our close icon. Now the close icon is actually the icon inside of our mobile navigation. And we selected that by using the class FA dash times dash circle. Next up and the last two we have here are mobile BG, which as you can tell would be our mobile BG class here. And then we have our mobile nav, which is going to be our UL class or our UL element right here. Okay. So now what we need to do is whenever a user clicks on the open icon, we want to go ahead and display our mobile navigation. So what we're going to say here is open icon. We're going to pass it a add event listener and we're going to simply say click. Now, after we click, we want to run a function. We're going to say an anonymous arrow function here. And here is where we're going to do our code. So first thing we want to do is we're going to say mobile BG. We're going to target the class list and we're going to toggle our display none. Display none. That's going to be the first thing. OK, next up, we're going to want to target our mobile nav here. Now, we haven't added this class to our actual mobile nav yet, but this is going to be a precaution to make everything reset and work properly when a user clicks on our navigation more than once. So we're going to say classless again here. And we're going to simply remove the class of slide out. Now, if you don't recall what this was from the previous portion of this video, we went ahead and created our slide in and slide out animation. So the reason why we're removing this is because we're simply saying that if someone had already clicked on our navigation, this technically would already be on here because we're going to add the slide out when someone goes ahead and clicks the uh, close icon. So this is pretty much just going to make it work no matter what if the user has already opened the navigation prior to doing another refresh. OK, now what we need to do is once this is done, we want to then target the mobile navigant and we're going to say class list dot toggle here and we want to toggle our slide in animation. So we're going to use some quotes here and say slide in. OK, 
And then what we also need to do is because we don't want to have our open icon displaying when we go ahead and open our navigation, let me explain. So right now it'll work. If we go ahead and head over to our actual demo here, if I refresh it, you should see when I click this, it, sh it pops in. Okay, now you can see here that this icon is still present. We do not want that, okay? So let's go ahead and fix that here. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna say mobile nav dot class list, or sorry, no, my bad. We want to say open icon dot class list dot toggle, and we're gonna toggle the display none on this as well. So if I say display none and resave this, and let me make sure everything else is working properly here. So mobile nav and yes. So if we go ahead and refresh this and we see now when we click on this, you can see that the icon is still there, but we're having a console error. So let me see what's going on. That might be the problem. So it's saying main JS 25, we can't receive a classless property of null. So what it's referring to is here 25 and it's saying of null, so mobile nav. Oh, you know what, we forgot the period there. Okay, so that's why it wasn't working. So the animation and that icon should now disappear. If we click on here, you can see the animation comes in smooth from the right, and now our icon is not there. So now we need to go ahead and say, when we click on this icon, we want to retract this, close our icon, and then re pretty much reset it back to it its initial state. So how we're gonna do this, is we're going to come down here and we're going to say we're going to add a, a add event listener to our close icon so we're going to say close icon dot add event listener we're going to pass in the click uh, event and then we're going to run another anonymous arrow function here and now inside of here we're going to need to use a set timeout method because if we pretty much replicate this code right here if we add display none right away the animation won't happen. So we need to delay the display none by a certain amount of time. And the easiest way to do that is with a set timeout method. So we're gonna say set timeout. We're going to open up this and we're gonna pass it a arrow function here. And then we're going to run this code inside of the arrow function after a certain amount of time by passing it an additional value here. And we're going to say 500 milliseconds, okay? So after 500 milliseconds, we're going to run this code. So what we're gonna say is mobile BG, and let's go ahead and try to find it, mobile BG. We're going to say class list, and we're going to toggle the display none, okay? There we go. Now, the other thing we want to delay is also the icon here of open. So we're gonna say open icon dot class list dot toggle, and also it's going to be display none okay so right away we want to then run so I'm gonna go ahead and throw a semicolon on here so this code right here will run after 500 seconds now we also want to run the animation class here so what we're gonna say is mobile nav dot class list dot toggle and we're gonna simply toggle the slide in and we need to do our quotes and we're gonna say slide in okay and to save some time, I'm going to simply copy and paste this down one more time. And we're going to say toggle slide out. So what it's going to say is when we click this close icon, it's going to toggle the slide in method to turn it off. And then it's going to add the slide out method so that it goes ahead and slides out. And that's exactly why we have the remove slide out here. Because if someone goes ahead and opens and closes that, we're going to have the slide out class on there. So we need to remove that. So now if we go ahead and check out our navigation it should be all complete so if we click on here the animation comes in it slides in from the right if i click close it actually is a little bit uh quicker so let's go see what we did wrong here okay so the problem actually was i didn't save the changes so if we go ahead and look at our navigation now it should work perfectly so if we go ahead and click that the animation comes in from the right that looks great and then if I close it, the animation goes back in and it goes back to the right, closes out that icon, and now our icon is present again. 
and we can go ahead and keep opening this closing it without any issues okay so that is how we go ahead and build our mobile navigation now that is going to do it for the building of our full website here now next up we're going to be actually hosting this to firebase so we'll go ahead and show you how to do that in the next video